assalamu alaikum students hope you all are fine today today i've come forward with a new chapter chapter number 15 natural resources you all know students that resources are those things that we use in our everyday life and this chapter it deals with all the natural resources so in short we can say the resources which are obtained by nature all those things that comes from the side of nature can be called as natural resources for example you can say air soil light water plants minerals and the animals they come under natural resources these resources the can be classified into renewable and non renewable resources so students what are renewable resources renewable resources are those resources that can be renewed or replenished by natural processes these resources these are not likely to get exhausted that means we can get it every now and then water soil air these are some of the renewable resources which we can get it every now and then they can be renewed or they can be replenished by rational resources natural processes so these resources are not likely to get exhausted that means they will not get over but if you talk about non-renewable resources non-renewable resources are likely to get exhausted once they are finished it's very tough to get it back again because these non-renewable resources like coal petroleum and the other minerals what you say these are formed over millions of years these are formed over a period of millions of years so to get it back we can't wait it for millions of years so such resources can be called as non-renewable resources minerals and fossil fuels on the other hand these are non-renewable resources we might run out of them if we use them up too fast but natural resources processes cannot renew them fast enough so the resources like coal petroleum what we call as fossil fuels or the other minerals if we use them up fast too then it will be very tough for nature to bring it to us once again they are not renewed fast enough so we must be very careful regarding the use of non-renewable resources so that our near future generations can use it we will consider one example each of renewable and non-renewable resources in this chapter so water soil and forest for example can also be get degraded or depleted the renewable resources as i've discussed about air soil water such resources can be renewed or replenished by natural processes and we can get it back we are not likely to get exhausted but if we don't take care of the renewable resources too then what will happen is that these renewable resources may even get degraded or depleted so my students you need to understand the ways to prevent all the renewable as well as the non-renewable resources so as you know that when you were in your previous class you have learned about forests so let's start with the topic forests how does this forest helps us and how does this forest helps in 
maintaining a balance in the atmospheric level. This forest, it plays a very important role in maintaining the environmental balance and it also helps us in many ways. You might have learned that this forest, it protects the soil, control floods and droughts and also helps in maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and helps to regulate temperature and rainfall. It is the forest which helps in bringing rainfall. It is the forest which helps in maintaining the temperature. So, a forest is helpful in all such ways. But if you talk about and if you talk about the people who are living nearby the forest, the villagers who are living nearby the forest and the tribals, they are able to get their livelihood from the forest. And this forest, it also helps in giving food to innumerable organisms. Innumerable organisms means many organisms, they are able to get their survive, survival, needs of survival from this forest. So, if we don't have this forest, then what will happen? We are going to discuss the next topic that is deforestation. So, deforestation is the term which is related to cutting down of forest or destruction of forest. So, as you have learned how forest is important to us and how it helps us not only in maintaining the environmental balance but also helps us in many different ways and if we don't have this forest what will happen so let us learn about deforestation the land under forest or forest cover is is shrinking all over the world all over the world what happens is that the forest cover or the land which is covered with forest is under shrinkage that means it is going down the forest worse affected are the tropical forests of South America, Asia and Africa. Such forests are in all these countries are worsely affected. Some West European countries and China have managed to reverse the trend and increase the area under forest cover by afforestation. But countries like China and European have managed to reverse the trend by increasing the area of land by afforestation. India too brought down the rate of deforestation and is developing plantations. So in this way deforestation is taking place in not only in India but also in other parts of the country and if you talk about India, India has brought down the rate of deforestation by undergoing the development projects on plantations. These plantations or man-made forests cannot fully make up the laws of primary or untouched forests, but to some extent they can save the world from getting degraded. The natural causes that takes place due to destruction of forests or due to deforestation are floods, storms, forest fires and all these causes are also triggered by human activities. For example, the Himalayan region has got deforestated because of human activities and so floods are taking place every now and then. If you talk about the Madhya Pradesh which is in India. In the year 1997 to 1998, what happened is that more than 5 lakh salt trees were cut down. So it has affected the forest very badly and these are all due to human activities. Now we shall learn some other human activities that cause deforestation extraction of timber you know what is a timber a timber is in simple words we can call it as a food so for the extraction of timber 
various forests were destructed. So commercial logging for timber is one of the major reasons for deforestation. Commercial logging is a major cause of deforestation. Why? Why it is a major cause of deforestation? Because we use the timber for many things such as buildings, houses, and making furniture, crates, chairs, and many more things. And the requirement for timber, it keeps on going up with the growth of population and consumption. Commercial logging or cutting down trees with electrically powered machines for industrial use destroys forests in many ways. Commercial logging is or cutting down the trees with a electrically powered machine. This electrically powered machine, it cuts down the trees in large numbers. At the time when the selected number of trees are to be cut, what happens is that this powered machine, it cuts down all the trees. It cuts down all the trees, non-timber trees and plants are also destroyed at the time of commercial logging. The process of making roads and other facilities needed for commercial logging, it also destroys more trees. So the extraction of timber is another human activity that leads to deforestation. Our next topic is regarding production of pepper. Students, as you know, pepper is made of bamboo. So the pulp that we get is derived from the forest. So at the time of extraction of forest, uh, pepper, about 40% of the wood used in the world every year goes in making pepper. That means out of 100, 40% of the wood are cut down throughout the world for making pepper. A lot of it, it comes from plantations developed specially for extraction of wood, logging for pulp, used to produce pepper thus caused large-scale destruction of forests in many Asian countries, Canada and Alaska. So in all such countries, what happens is that the logging for pepper has caused large-scale destruction of forests. So these are some of the ways of by which humans leads to destruction of forest or leads to deforestation. Another way that is the fuel wood. Humans they use different types of wood as a fuel. So wood is still the major source of energy for domestic purposes for the rural people in developing countries. We know in our homes even though we have these various types of electrical heaters or we have these gas stoves or some other sources for producing the energy, we still use wood for deriving the energy. So it is mostly used for domestic purposes in most of the rural poor in developing countries. In India, for about 95% of the people living in villages, they depend on wood and cattle dung for the energy needs. So if 95% of the villagers, they depend on the wood, then only 5% of the wood would remain on the forest. So because of the extraction of fuel wood from the forest, it also leads destruction of forest to a large scale. It can degrade of open woodlands and the wood and charcoal are also used for industrial purposes in some countries. In Brazil, for example, the steel industry depends heavily on charcoal. So countries like Brazil, they depend on charcoal for running the steel industries. Some other reasons we have which leads to deforestation are shifting cultivations. So this shifting cultivation is a traditional agricultural practice which is followed in Asia, Africa and South America. This traditional practice 
it also leads to deforestation how this process is consists of clearing a part of a forest by cutting down and burning the vegetation and growing crops on the cleared land a cleared land is used for going cultivation or for undergoing vegetation how the cleared land is obtained by cutting down all the trees in that very land and once the land has been cultivated with vegetation the very next year what happens is that these to leave the land fallow and these to proceed in a, another plot of land cutting down more number of trees again in this way the shifting cultivation is in practice in countries like asia africa and south america which also leads to heavy destruction of forests which we call as deforestation development projects like dams roads and railways also destroys forests the government has set down various projects for the development of roads railways and dams so these projects when it is carried on to complete the project sometimes the engineers have to cross their way or they have to cross different forests at the time when they cross any forest what the happens is that they cut down the total number of trees the whole number of trees that comes on their way so this also leads to deforestation now <coughs> we shall discuss about some of the impacts or effects that takes place due to deforestation students you all know that if we don't have forests then it will be very tough for us to get rain we have learned that forest helps in bringing rainfall and not only this you have learned that forest also helps us in many ways it helps in providing food to all the organisms living on the forest that means the wild animals they will not be able to get their food apart from this there are many more impacts or deep, uh, effects that takes place due to deforestation the first one you have here is soil erosion what is soil erosion at times when the soil gets carried away by natural agents like wind rain or storm the soil gets eroded or such a state or condition can be called as soil erosion we know that the forest it helps a large number of trees and the trees it helps in holding the soil which helps the soil to be at one place but if all the trees of the forest are cut down or they are deforested then what will happen is that the soil will get washed off due to natural agents like wind rain and storm so when the soil will get scattered from one place to other place at that time the soil erosion takes place we know that the tar desert in the northwest of india it was once a fertile land it was once a fertile land but now it has got converted into a desert which doesn't have a single plant the soil it protects the trees and the trees also protects the soil so they have a close relation connection with each other the leaves of the, which protects the soil from the direct impact of rain and fruits it helps to keep the soil in one place and the forests when they are cut down 
the soil is exposed to erosion by rain and wind. The fertile topmost soil is loose and over time the land turns barren. As we have learned about the Thar Desert, once it was a fertile land, but with the passage of time due to deforestation, what happened? The land, the fertile land, that is the Thar Desert, has got a barren desert. Now some of the other effects of deforestation are floods and droughts. Floods, as you all know, it takes place naturally at the time when there are some changes in the natural processes. So we know due to deforestation only these floods and droughts are taking place. So, but how? When mountain slopes and uplands are deforested, the water rushes down and causes rivers to overflow and flood lower lands. So especially in mountainous regions when the trees are cut down or deforested during rainfall all the water runs off through the slopes and de get overflowed in the low lying water bodies like rivers and all and at last it gets flooded in lower lands in this way flood takes place and if you talk about the drought we know that if all the forests or all the trees of the forest are cut down then what will happen is that it will lead to a condition of total dryness called drought it will not bring rainfall at all as we can give the example of the Thar Desert which hardly gets rainfall through, throughout the in a year. Deforestation can lead to droughts because forests haul water and release it slowly. When they are cut down the water rushes down very fast and the uplands especially are deprived of water soon after the rains. By holding water and improve, improving the water retaining capacity of the soil forests also help recharge groundwater. In India deforestation of the Himalayas has changed perennial streams into seasonal streams which runs out of water soon after the monsoon. So if you talk about drought, drought takes place mostly in uplands. When the trees are cut down the water rush very fast and uplands especially are deprived of water after the rain. The next impact of deforestation is climate change. Over 95% of the water absorbed by the trees from the soil is released into the year during transpiration. This increases rainfall and brings down temperature in the region around a forest. Naturally, when a large area is deforested, there are changes in the climate of that area. We know that 95% of the water that is absorbed by the trees from the soil is released to the year during transpiration and because of which in, uh, rainfall takes place and increase rainfall and brings down temperature in region. The temperature of the place falls down and due to rainfall. But when a large area is deforested, deforested what happens is that we are able to find some changes in climate in that very area where the deforestation has taken place. Deforestation, it can lead to global changes in the weather pattern by increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the year. As you know that forest helps in maintaining a balance in the atmosphere by giving out oxygen and taking in carbon dioxide. So when the forest gets deforested in that very area or a region, what will happen is that it will lead to global changes in weather pattern by increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the year. And the trees, what will happen is that they will die. The cutting down the trees means the loss of this service 
Also, when the trees are used as a fuel, the carbon locked in them is released into the air as carbon dioxide. Even when they are used as timber or for other purposes, the branches and leaves, roots and carbon dioxide is released into the air. It is estimated that the destruction of tropical forests alone accounts for more than 25% of the carbon dioxide released in the air annually. Annually, 25% of the carbon dioxide gas is released in a place where the uh, trees are cut down or it has been deforested. So it can lead to a global change in the weather pattern by increasing the temperature of, the, of a very region with the increase of carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere. It will also be called as the, uh, global warming. Global warming is believed to be causing uncharacteristically frequent and severe cyclones, floods, droughts and forest fires across the world. And because of global warming, what will happen is that uh, uncharacteristically frequent floods and droughts are also said to be happened. Our next topic regarding the fossil fuels. Students, as you know, we use different types of fuels for obtaining energy. So what is the fossil fuel? Fossil fuels are the fuels that we get from the remains of dead plants and animals, which has got buried under the earth's crust millions of years ago, like coal, petroleum, and oil. Coal, petroleum, and natural gas these are called fossil fuels and they are formed by a process called fossilization of living beings. If you talk about the formation of some of the fuels that we are using right at present, then let us start with coal, formation of coal. How this coal is formed? Millions of years ago, plants they thrived in large shallow stems and they got buried under the earth owing to some natural phenomena and fossilized in the course of time and a combination of heat pressure and bacterial action gradually converted these buried remains into quail so what happened is that the remains of the dead plants they got buried under a shallow stream and after they got buried what happened is that various natural phenomena over the course of time which has taken place with a combination of heat and pressure has gradually converted these remains into quail which we are right using right now there are different forms of quail let us discuss one by one peat whose carbon content is 55 to 65 percent the next one is lignite whose carbon content is 65 to 75 person then we have got bituminous Sorry, this is 90. Then the last one we have is anthracite. Whose carbon content is 92 or we can say 90%. So these are the four different types or stages of coil which are formed.
and all these four stages of coil have got different carbon contents. You can see peat, it has got 55 to 65 percent, lignite, it has got 65 to 75 percent, bituminous, it has got 75 to 90 percent, and anthracite, it has got 90 percent. So, the as we go on from first to last, the carbon content of the coil goes on increasing. So, it is sure to you, it is clear to you that the carbon content of anthracite which is the last one is more and it is considered as the best quality coil. Nextly, we shall discuss some other for, uh, fuels and how they are formed. Fuels like petroleum and natural gas. Petroleum as you know which is also called crude oil it is found deep under the earth between the layers of the rocks and so it has been named petroleum in latin petra means rock and oleum means oil so the latin name of petroleum is petra oleum so the, from the word we can understand that petroleum is a rock oil Natural gas often found in association with petroleum consists mostly of methane which is written by the formula CH4. Along with the petroleum gas we are also able to find this natural gas and this natural gas it consists mostly of methane. Both the petroleum and the natural gas they are formed from the remains of marine organisms that means the organisms which are found in marine bodies water bodies when they die and they get collected on the floors of seas millions of years ago the remains were decomposed by the bacterial action and were buried under layers of sediments deep under the earth due to high pressure and temperature the remains they get converted or into a liquefied dark tink what we call as petroleum and the other gets converted to gas in this way we are able to get this petroleum and natural gas now if you talk about the utilization of such fossil fuels right at present we know we are in shortage of the use of fossil fuels like petrol, kerosene, diesel or coal and all. Why we are in shortage of such fuels that we get from the fossils? Because more than 75% of the world's energy requirements are met by the fossil fuels. So if you see out of 100, 75% of the world's energy if it is met by the fossil fuels then how would it be possible for the world to save the fuels? We mean the commercial energy. These fuels are not produced by themselves. The people who are using such fuels, they are not able to produce such fuels. They are always either buying or selling it. They are always using this fuel as a commercial fuel or we can also call commercial energy and this commercial energy is the energy that is bought or sold and not the energy that is obtained from the crop residues or cattle dunks and all. Coil petroleum and natural gas have some other uses too. We use this coil petroleum and natural gas not only as a fuel to get energy like burning and all, it can also be used to in many other purposes to obtain other things. Coil tar, coil gas, coke and ammonical liquor. These are some of the fuels which are obtained from coil petroleum and natural gas by undergoing a process known as destructive distillation of coil. In this process what happens is that the coil is heated in the absence of air and the products formed are coke, coil tar and ammonical liquor. Now if we go on using this uh, fossil fuels without having any limitation then our near future generations will not get to see such fuels 
So we need to take some alternative sources or we need to search for some alternative sources of energy so that we can prevent these fossil fuels and our near future generations can get it. So let us discuss some of the alternative energy sources. Firstly, I shall discuss about biomass energy. This biomass energy is the ener energy which is derived from plants and animals, etc. So in most of the places, even in rural places, rural villages or regions, we find that people are using this biomass energy. So this biomass energy it is obtained from plants and animal excreta where crop remains sludge from sewage, municipal waste, kettle dung and many more can be turned into gaseous fuel in the biogas plant. Inside this plant what happens is that the bacteria acting on the waste material it helps in producing a gas and this gas it mainly contains methane which is called uh, which is written as CH4. This gas is used directly as a fuel or we can use this fuel directly for producing electricity even. These sources of energy is being used increasingly in rural India. That means in places, in rural places of India. The our next alternative source of energy is hydroelectricity. Hydroelectricity is the energy which is derived from float, flowing water. We know we are able to get this electric current from the water, the, what we call as hydroelectricity. About 25% of the power generated in our country, it comes from hydroelectric power stations. So do you know students, which hydroelectric power stations Assam is using. If you don't know, you can ask me after thinking it in your next class. Solar energy is the another alternative source of energy in which we are able to use the energy of the sunlight for cooking and heating in solar cookers and solar heaters. It can be used to produce electricity with the help of solar cells and solar panels even. So you might have seen Nowadays, people are using this solar energy for uh, electrical purposes. At the time when there is no power, what happens is that if they have the solar panels, then they are able to use the energy through the solar panels to light their rooms or houses and all. Wind energy is another alternative source of energy which is used to, to run turbines in wind power plants, Europe accounts for 70% of the total wind energy power produced in the world. European people, they are uh, using this wind energy about 70% to produce power. That means we have learned that hydroelectricity, that which is the energy derived from the water, it is only 25%. That means 25% of the energy is used to generate power, to generate electricity. But in case of wind, European countries are using 70% of the energy to generate powers. Ocean energy is another source, alternative source of energy, which is obtained from waves and tides, and it can be used to generate electricity as well. So countries like Europe are using this ocean energy which is derived from waves and tides. Geothermal energy is another type of energy which is obtained from natural fountains of hot water and steam. It is also used for generating electricity. Countries like United States of America, New Zealand and Iceland, they have put this source of energy for a very good use. So 
these are some of the alternative sources of energy that we can use which occurs naturally so we can prevent our fuels that we are using right at present for our future generations if we go on using such alternative sources of energy now let us learn about some of the alternative fuels synthetic petrol this synthetic petrol is used to mean petrol made from sources other than crude oil or petroleum we know crude oil or petroleum is the oil which is called fossil fuel which is also called fossil fuel it is derived from the remains of dead plants and animals and to get it it takes millions of years so once it gets exhausted it will be very tough to get it so if you want to prevent this crude oil or petroleum we can use an alternative fuel known as synthetic petrol for preventing the fossil fuels nextly a special plantations of plants like mahua and jitrupa are being developed to produce biodiesel this biodiesel is made from animal fat and vegetable oil so if we want to prevent some diesels that we are getting from the fossil fuels then we can even extract the uh, we can go on plantation of mahua and jitrupa plants and this mahua and jitrupa plants are used for getting biodiesel and with the help of which we can use it to run different engines or vehicles and all so my dear students hope you all have understood a little bit if you have any doubts or queries regarding this chapter you can put your comments i shall try my best to make your doubts clear thank you